In this video, we will look into group structure, which is an essential building block in many fields, including functional programming. But before that, let's briefly recap what we covered in the previous video. In the last video, we learned about three basic structures, magma, semigroup, and monoid. Starting from magma, it is a structure consisting of a set of values like A and a binary operation. This binary operation, which we show with multiplication here, receives two values of set A and maps it to another value in the same set. Or in another words, the multiplication is closed on set A. Semigroup is a magma in which the multiplication is associative meaning the order of applying the sequence of multiplications is not important. Monoid is a semigroup that has an identity value in a set. A value is identity if multiplying it with any value like A in the set returns the value A. Group, which is the topic of this video, is a monoid in which each value in the set has a unique inverse. This means if we pick any value like a from the set, there is another value a prime which multiplying a and a prime returns the identity value. It's like a prime neutralizing the effect of a and gives us the identity value. As a matter of fact, by just adding this requirement to monoids, we get an amazingly powerful tool. But before getting more into this, Let's take a look at group implementation in TigerScript. Group is an interface that has a closed binary operation over type A called concat, which is associative, has an identity value called empty, and an inverse method which maps each value in type A into another value in the same type that is the inverse of it. Since group is a monoid, we can define group by extending monoid. Similar to associativity, we cannot enforce the rules of inverse in TypeScript. In order to make sure inverse is working as we expect for some instance of a group in TypeScript, we need to write a test for it. Group is used in many fields in mathematics and is considered one of the fundamental building blocks in those fields. Just knowing that mathematicians use such a general word for this shows us the importance of groups. If I want to explain group in simple words, group is all about codifying the idea of symmetry. To understand groups better, let's take a look at an example. Think of a triangle with equal sides in a flat surface. What actions and transformations can we do on a triangle to still get the same look? Well, doing nothing doesn't change the triangle look. That can be our identity transformation. Another way can be rotating the triangle 120 degrees. Same way, we can rotate the triangle 240 degrees. But what about 360 degrees rotation though? Well, if we rotate 360 degrees, it's like we did nothing. Or in another words, it's like we applied the identity transformation, right? So 360 degree rotation is redundant. The other way we can transform the triangle is to flip the triangle from the middle. We also can do the same with two lines passing through each corner. Let's think about applying these transformations one after the other, or in another words, composing them. For example, by composing 120 degrees rotation twice, we'll effectively get a 240 degrees rotation. What if we first rotate 120 degrees and then flip the triangle from the middle? In that case, if we think about it, it's like we flipped the triangle from the right. Let's draw a table for our triangle actions 
similar to multiplication table we learned in elementary school. From this table, by selecting an action from the left and top, we can calculate what effectively happens if we apply the left action first and then the top one. And by doing this, for every two possible actions, we can find out all the composition possibilities. This table is actually the essence of what our triangle transformation is. We have all the information we need in one place in this table. For example, as you see, the first transformation is an identity action for our composition. Because combining any transformation with that one gives us the same action. And this is valid if we switch the position of them as well. To see if our triangle actions and their compositions form a group, let's consider the 120 degrees rotation. If this is a group, then we should have another action that neutralizes the effect of applying 120 degrees rotation. Or in other words, inverse it. From our table, we can easily see that 240 degrees rotation is the inverse of 120 degrees rotation, meaning applying 120 degrees rotation first and then 240 degrees rotation gives us the identity action. As a matter of fact, for every possible action here, we can find a unique inverse that neutralizes the effect of that action. Since working with shapes is hard, let's use symbols instead. So now in our table, all rotations are specified by R with a rotation degree, and the flipping actions are shown by from which corner the flipping line is passing. Stepping back to our group definition, we have a set of actions, we have a closed binary operation between each two elements in our set, the order of applying our binary operation is not important, meaning our multiplication operation is associative and parentheses are not needed. We have an identity action which acts like a neutral element in our composition definition. And for every action, we have a unique action that by composing them, it neutralizes their effect and gives us the identity element. So after all this, we can say triangle transformations and their composition is a group. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's imagine we have three items, like these three circles. What we're interested in is the permutation of these three circles. If you try to list all the permutations here, we end up with six distinct permutations. Each one places circles in a distinct position. Similar to our triangle action example, we can also compose these permutations. For example, if we swap the first two circles first and then swap the second two circles, it's like we rotate all the circles, one to the left. If we swap the second pair of circles first, and then swap the first pair, then it's like we are rotating the circles one to the right. As you see, the order of composing the same permutations makes a difference to the end result. In another words, binary operation for composing permutations is not commutative. A composition is commutative if for any A and B, composing A and B is equal to composing B and A. In general, groups don't need to be commutative. If they do, they are called abelian groups. Let's move on. Let's draw the composition table for permutation of three items similar to what we did for triangle transformations. Keep in mind that doing nothing is always part of our actions. And for permutation, 
it is the identity action as well. Because composing quotes and quotes doing nothing with any permutation gives us the same permutation again. We can also see each permutation has a unique inverse permutation as well, which neutralizes its effect and gives us the identity permutation. Let's again replace each permutation shape with a symbol. Here I'm showing looping through items by L and swapping between pairs of items with S. But wait a second, doesn't this table look familiar? Let me put the triangle composition table next to this one. If you squint your eyes a bit, you can see some similarities between these two tables. Let me help you by coloring the same elements in both tables. Do you see it? The position of the elements in the tables are exactly the same. It's just we name the elements differently in the tables. But we could have named them the same in the first place. Do you remember I said every piece of information is encoded in these composition tables? I really meant that. These two tables are the same, meaning that permutation of three items and triangle symmetry is the same beast. We can actually consider them equal, or in the context of group theory and functional programming, these two groups are isomorphic. Isomorphic groups have the same structure and behave the same. So whatever we find in one is also true for the other one. For our last example, let's look at something more practical. We will look into an encryption technique that was actually being used by Julius Caesar around 50 BC to protect his confidential messages. Let's say you have a string and you want to encrypt it. First thing we need is to choose an integer as a key. Using that integer, we will shift each character that number of times. For example, shifting the characters of hello world zero times gives us the same string. By incrementing the integer, each character shifts to its successor accordingly and returns the encrypted message. As you see in our example, we are only rotating the alphabets and not touching the special characters like a space and exclamation mark. After encrypting and shifting hello world three times, the character W in word turns into Z. What happens to Z in the cipher if we encrypt and shift four times? It rotates back to the beginning of English alphabet which is the character A. If that's so, what happens if we rotate and shift hello world 26 times? Well, as you know, 26 is the number of alphabets in English language. Take a moment and think about it. You're right. The encrypt function for the key 26 will return hello world again. In order to see why, imagine placing all the English alphabets in order on a border of a circle. As an example, let's take a character like H and encrypt it with 3. Moving 3 steps on our circle, we can easily see encrypting H returns the character K. Now let's decrypt K with the same key. We are expecting decrypt function to return our initial H character, right? How can we design this decrypt function? One way is to go three characters back. But let's say we are not allowed to do that. The other option is to move forward enough to get back where we were initially, which is same as encrypting and shifting K again by 23. By looking at our arrows, I think you can tell why 23. 
since there are only 26 items on the circle, by moving 3 plus 23 steps, we do a complete walk around the circle and we get back where we were initially. Let's see how many ways we can encrypt a character like H. We can simply not move at all, or shift one step, or shift two steps, or three steps, all the way to shift 25 steps. Can we shift 26 steps? Well, we can, but shifting 26 steps is same as not shifting at all. Or in another words, is same as S0. All right, so we could come up with 26 actions for encrypting a character. Just keep in mind that these actions can be applied to any characters and they're not specific to H. We can also compose these shifting actions. For example, shifting 2 and then shifting 3 is like shifting 5. We also know that if we have a sequence of shifts, the order in which we compose the shifts is not important. For example, if we shift 1 and 2 first and then shift 3 is same as shifting 1 first and then shifting 2 and 3, or in another words, composing shifts is associative. We also have the identity action of not doing anything, meaning that if we compose doing nothing with any shifts is like only doing that shift. We can easily see that each shift has also a unique inverse. For example, the inverse of shifting 3 is shifting 23. It neutralizes the effect of shifting 3, which is equal to identity shift. In the next video, we will look into how to implement group with some examples. But for now, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.